What is going on my doggies? Welcome back to another video. This is a highly, highly requested video. One year of having this troopy. I'm gonna run you guys through the good, the bad, the ugly, the things I love and the things I hate on this car. All right, we're not gonna do this in any particular order, but we're just gonna start straight up the front. What I've done is we've got a ARB Deluxe Bull Bar up the front. Obviously, we're in Australia, kangaroos, all the kind of wildlife. We do a heap of night driving. So this ARB Deluxe Bar has not faulted me. It is a bloody beautiful bar. I like the look of it. It's as sturdy as all hell. It's a good looking bar. Hanging off that front bar, we've got these steady spotlights. Now these things, absolute bloody game changers. The bracket that fits here, the, the mounting system on the actual car itself, absolutely bloody beautiful. I've never ever had to change these. I've never vibrated loose. We've been doing corrugated tracks, like hours on corrugations. Never had a problem with these spotlights. And while we're on the, while we're on the lights, you'll notice these are the only lights on the Troopy. I don't have a light bar up top. I don't have little side lights here. In my opinion, these steady spotlights here absolutely flood the road at night. It's more than enough light for what we need. Sitting between the spotlights, what we have is a 12,000 pound Bush Ranger winch. Now this also comes with a flip up number plate. There, got the winch inside here. To be honest, we haven't used this winch too much. I've actually used this winch more like pulling big trees out of the way off of a track. It's never really pulled the troopy out of a bog. We haven't really been that stuck to be honest, but we use this winch couple of fun times with the boys. One of the boys was in his swag. He was asleep. We sort of winched him up over a tree with the winch. So we've had a bit of fun with it, but we've never really had to use it too often in the bush or in a boggy situation. We've got two aerials up front. When this aerial here was put on, I thought it would actually give me the shits because it's in the line of drive sight. So when you look down the road, that's right in the center, but it, I've, just, I've just become used to it. It honestly does not bother me whatsoever. This is our cell booster. So I'll show you guys in the car, we've got a cell booster which actually boosts our phone signal. And this here is the GME 6.1 DBI aerial. So this is the one I run all the time. We're in Western Australia, it's nice and flat. So we're running the GME 6.1, oh, 6.6 DBI aerial up front there. All right, let's go down the side of the car. We've got a big dirty set of scrub bars running along the side here, which come down to a, a side step which runs all the way to the back of the, front of the back tire. These things, obviously Mac 10 would never be able to get in the Troopy if this sidestep wasn't here. It protects the car and obviously it's easy to stand up here and you can just get stuff off your roof. Sidesteps, they're just a must. Mirrors, this is the OG Cruiser mirror. I haven't actually upgraded to um, towing mirrors. Look, if you guys are buying four-wheel drives or you've got a four-wheel drive, you will understand that you can just open your wallet, flip it upside down. Whatever money was in that wallet is gonna be gone. It is endless the amount of stuff you can do to cars. So what you'll notice as we go around this Troopy, I've done things which I wanna do, but I've kept it as basic as possible. So you'll, I'll run you through things that I haven't done. And the one thing that I haven't done is towing mirrors. I've never, I haven't really found a need. We tow the Stabie around, we tow the Tinny around, and um, I've never really needed bigger mirrors. So these are good enough for me. All right, now this here has gotta be one of the most used items on the car. This is a Max Trax holder slash table. So inside here, we've got four max tracks. The thing that I love about this is they're not in the car. They're not up on the roof rack. It's lockable. So I've got a padlock on here. So those dirty little bastards can't come and take your max tracks. It is as sturdy as hell. What I actually do is I use this as a footrest. So when I, when I want to climb up on the roof and get the surfboards off, I step on the side step and then I step there and I can just get up on the car. It is bulletproof. This thing has been on the car for over a year now. No issues with it whatsoever. Basically, you flip your little latch down, flip your little latch down, bang. You've got a table which is so universal. We fill it fish on here, we cook on here. If you guys are gonna be buying a Troopy, I would highly, highly recommend looking at a Max Trax table like this. This one is just built to quality. This big stainless steel um, cords or strings that are holding the table here, it's sturdy. Mate, it's a game changer. If you're gonna buy a Troopy, I'd be um, looking at getting one of these straight up. All right, coming around the back of the Troop Dog now. As you guys can see, she is as dirty as whole hell. We've just come back from a trip up north and um, she's in her natural state right now. She's dirty, she's salty, she's muddy. She's looking like she should be. But on the back of the car here, we've got a Kmart rear bar. This thing, as it, this thing is as heavy, heavy duty as it gets. We've got these big heavy duty latches, two 20 liter water containers on the back opens up on a gas strut there, so you can be on a hill, it can be blowing its tits off and that doesn't ever close on you. 
Spare tire on the driver's side. Again, a big heavy duty latch opens that up and that's how we enter the back of the Troopy. These two water containers here, probably again, one of the most used items on the car. This is where when we're cooking, we're cleaning, we're catching crabs, we're washing our hands, wash your feet after you've been on a mud crabbing mission. These things get an absolute flogging, but because we use them so much, these little taps on the side here, they flog out all the time. This is probably like the 10th or 12th time I've had to replace these little taps here. What I do is I put marine silicon on the inside there and marine silicon them in so they don't vibrate out on tracks. Obviously when we're off grid, water is one of the most important things. So marine silicon them in, but it's a, it's a little bit of a negative. These things break all the time, but at the same time they cost like two or three dollars. So it doesn't matter too much. We've got straps over here with padlocks so no one can steal our water containers. They're locked in there for life. It's a bloody good little system and these get used all the time. On the other side of this Kmar bar, what we have is our spare tire. So inside the spare tire, I've just, I've just wedged a couple of bags of things in here. So we've got like straps and just stuff that you don't need every day, but in an emergency, it's there if you ever need it. Hanging off the front of the um, spare tire, again, a very, very much used item is this AOS bin bag. This thing, look at this. We've got rubbish in here. I've got shoes in here. I've got little grills for cooking on a fire. We've got big sand pegs. I've got wire so we can do a little bit of water divining. There's so much stuff in this bag. This bag is just, it actually comes in handy all the time. We keep a heap of straps in that front pocket. And then on this side, tent pegs. You guys, if you watch the videos, you know that I always cook on tent pegs to raise our pan above the fire. And then tucked in behind the um, bin bag there, we've got a hose. So that hose is what we use when we're out bush to fill up all of our water tanks if we can't get too close to a tap. But that bin bag, and again, a necessity. If you've got a troopy or a car, you want to put something on the back of the tire, this gets used all the time. All right, come in close and have a look at this because this is, I'm going to say it, a game changer again. See this little camera here. I've actually put this little camera which directly looks at my tow ball. So when I'm in the bush at a boat ramp, you don't want to look like an idiot when you're reversing your car. I've got this hooked up to the, the, the lens inside the dash there. I can just drive anywhere and it's the most beautiful. It literally just goes straight on, first shot, every shot. Little camera looking straight down at your tow ball. Every time it's a winner. Coming down the driver's side of the car, this, this side of the car is pretty basic. You've got a sub tank here, which is the original tank that comes in the cruiser. And then you've got your main tank here. Again, I haven't upgraded the fuel tanks in this car. I think we can hold around 160. I think they're 80 litre tanks. So 2816, you can hold 160 litres of diesel. That's more than enough. I've never really had to push any more diesel than what we've got in here. So they're the standard tanks that come with the car. All right, let's talk tyres. So these bad boys here are 35 inch tires. These are the Nitto Trail Grappler. Um, it's a 315, 75 on a 16 inch rim. This is the second set of tires that we've had on this car now. And uh, look, they're not a bad tire. These are probably about 50% worn through now. Probably you could have gone with a little bit of a harder tire. Um, we do a lot and a lot of on-road driving as well as off-road driving. Sometimes I'll, sometimes I'll be doing like 2000 Ks one way just to knock a video on, a, on the head. So we do a lot of open road driving, but these tires aren't too bad to be honest. Once you drop them down to like 20 pound on the sand, this car is like honestly just about unstoppable. It's really, really good. They're not too loud on the open road either. So for the time being, I'm pretty happy with these tires. Last but not least, we've got a snorkel hanging off the side of the car here. This is a Safari R-Max snorkel. This thing, you just heaves air in, dude. When you put your foot down, you can just hear it sucking in air. That's basically the outside of the car done. You will notice that there is no awning hanging off the side of this car. An awning is something that I, I don't know. It's, I'm, I fight awnings all the time. So the way that we do our traveling, I have a fully blown ADD character, right? I can't sit down. So having an awning coming out would be nice to have that shade, but I honestly don't ever sit outside my car. Like I'm always on the move, I'm moving. We never camp anywhere more than one to two days. Maybe if, I, if I'm you know, going to retirement and I sit back in an old rocking chair, I'd like an awning that come around, those 270 awnings. But for now, we don't have an awning hanging off the side of the car and it's purely because I probably would never use it. So I haven't chucked an awning on, but that's basically the outside of the Troopy. All right, let's jump into the cockpit and have a look at the inside of this car. First thing, if you're gonna buy a cruiser, I'm telling you right now, this is what you have to do. It's, it's, not, even a, it's not even an option, you've gotta do it. One stone armrest, these things, Honestly, are one of the best inventions. I took this thing, this is a, they're incredible. It's just a little magnet, that's an armrest. I took it off the other day and I felt like I was naked. My arm was slipping off, it was just, they're so good. 
that sits there. You got a drink holder, coffee's in the morning. It's just, it is one of the best ideas ever. If you're gonna buy a cruiser, that's one of the first things you buy, apart from that table on the side. So we just got the stock door trims here. One thing that I will say when I got this door open is I put these little six inch speakers in here. And um, when we're on the road, we've got the music blast. We've got the music blasting. I am one of those people who will drive with their window down. If it's freezing cold, raining, windy, I don't care. Windows are always down. I hate being in a claustrophobic little car. So when you got the windows down, those little speakers are nowhere near enough. I'd love to put speakers sort of up above my head here. I'll show you where I want to put the speakers when we jump in the cab. But that's the door trim, one arm stone rest. You need it. All right, coming up here into the cockpit, this is where I spend a lot of time. Like I said, sometimes I'll drive 13 hours, 15 hours one way just to do an episode for YouTube. So I do a lot of driving in this front seat. One of the main things that I use all the time is this quad lock phone holder. It took me a little while to get a good quality phone holder, but this quad lock holder here, quad lock phone holder, she's a bloody beautiful little thing. What you can do is it's universal. So I've got the quad lock thing here. I've also got it on the boat and I've also got it on my motorbike. So that same case there clicks onto my boat, clicks onto my motorbike and it clicks onto the troopy. So we've just got a mount on all of my toys. It's bloody beautiful. Coming down here, steering wheel. This is obviously the standard steering wheel. You can get steering wheels with little buttons and knobs and volumes and all that sort of stuff. But like I said, you can honestly flip your wallet inside out on troopies or cruisers and just start spending some serious amounts of money. So if I want to turn the volume up, I'll just do it there. Coming down into the center of the troopy here, we've got this little Alpine head unit. Now this is what that little camera at the back of the car is connected to. So when I turn the car on, slap it in reverse, you will just see the tow ball right there. So you can just back straight up to a boat, a trailer, whatever you want to do. Make sure there's no little grommies running around the back of the car. It's so easy. So that camera is connected to this. And then this unit is also connected to my phone, which is connected to a cell booster, which we've always got internet just about anywhere we go. We've just about always got internet. So this is how we find places to go. If you look on, the, if you look on this map here, you'll see we're on the side of a creek right now. That's us there. We can navigate around left, right. You can see a track here. You can zoom in, you can zoom out. And that's how we usually find the little places where we camp, those off-grid spots. This gets used all the time. It's a little Alpine head unit. It's probably getting old in the tooth, to be honest. There's probably better ones out there now, but this thing's still, still doing a great job. This is how we play the tunes in the car, and this is what I'm talking about. We've got the two, the two six-inch speakers in the doors down the bottom there. What I would absolutely love is another speaker here or a speaker up behind my head up here somewhere. So when I'm driving, windows are down, doing 110 k's an hour, it's just like a whirlwind in here. I'd love to have another set of speakers. So that's something that I'd probably look at doing. But um, that head unit there, no issues with it. It's very, very, very good. So in the center here, we've got a center console from Cruiser Consoles. Again, can't complain with it. It's a, the perfect height for when you're driving to rest your arm on. It's nice and soft. Big, deep channel here. So what I keep in here is just phone, I mean wallet, headlight. If you guys want to get a really good headlight, O-Light head torches. O-Light torches in general, they're just incredibly good. But that's a big, deep compartment in there. Perfect height for your arm. We've got two drink holders here, and then you get this little box. If I was to build another Troopy, what I'd probably, be, what I'd probably do is, pretty sure Cruiser Consoles do another one which comes out here and incorporates this section. I'd get rid of this poxy drink holder which comes stock when you buy a Cruiser and I'd probably make something here as a storage compartment. But this is good, mate. It's good enough for us, but if I was to do it again, I'd definitely get rid of that and incorporate that bit of space there for storage. UHF radio. What we're running in this car is the XRS Connect unit. Um, this is it. This is the whole entire unit built in there. There is no, no, there is no longer like a box up here. I've tucked that down. It runs down here and it actually tucks away underneath there. So it's very, very neat. This is a magnet, that's a magnet. So let's just click on, click off. These GME products are that good. In here, we've got the little, the little GME handheld unit. This and this we use all the time, especially when Mac 10's like ages away, we can talk to each other. I'll have to put this in my backpack, Mac 10 will sit in the car, we can still talk to each other through these two units. So that unit is running that aerial on the left, that GME aerial up there. But these two products, GME, Absolutely killing it boys. This thing, we use it all the time. It's good. That magnet, again, it's a game changer. I don't know where I would be without this little dash mat organizer. These things are pretty stock standard. You can get them just about everywhere. But this, this is where I just keep all my stuff. I've got this very, very random little mouse fishing lure. Have a look at the hooks on that thing. 
That'll end the fishes. That's a little Murray cod lure. So we got this toothbrush, toothpaste, pens, lighters, pocket knives, mints, sunglasses, cleaner, chewies. We've got chopsticks, pens, all of just random stuff is up there. Lip cream, zinc, that all stays up in the front there. Jumps around on corrugated tracks, never falls out. Keeps this thing kind of organized because you're not having all those little things inside there. It's just a nice little bit of organization. While we're talking about organization, up here, we're gonna go up onto the roof in a minute, but on the roof, we've had the roof conversion cut off and put on. So as you do that roof conversion, you get this top section, which doesn't come in a troopy. So you've got this whole entire section up here for storage as well. So up here, we've got fly nets, we've got bucket hats, which are available at fieldayshop.com. Wear these things when you don't wanna get your bloody neck sunburnt. But that's, there's a lot of storage up here. Look at this, we've got back upper hats. We've got everything up here, but this is a real nice little thing of storage. Like I said, I'd probably chuck a set of speakers here and here, and um, it would be tip top, but that's a beautiful bit of storage up there. All right, let's talk about seats. These seats that we've got in the cruiser here are the original seats that come with the car. A lot of people don't like them. Look, I don't mind them. A seat's a seat in my opinion. I'm just gonna sit in it. I'm gonna drive to where I wanna get to. When I get out, I have a bloody good time. What I would love to do is put like bucket seats in. There's a few companies that are doing bucket seats these days, but these are the OG seats right now. I don't have an issue with them. We've wrapped the seats in these black duck seat covers, and this is like the really strong canvas seat cover. Bloody hell, I tell you what, these things get mud, fish, blood, guts. Look at the state of this seat right now. It is a pigsty. I've never actually taken these seat covers off. So you know what we're doing? I'm gonna take them off right now. First time ever taking these seat covers off. Let's see the condition of the seat under here. Look at that dude, that is a brand new seat right there. I honestly go mud crabbing, fishing, I've got mud all over me, I'm launching the tinny, I jump in here with a wet soggy ass. Look at the state of that seat, that is a brand new seat like the day we bought it. It goes to show that you spend money on a good set of seat covers. Look at the colour of the inside. The inside is clean, the outside is absolutely filthy. If there's one piece of advice that I could give anyone building a four-wheel drive or just in life in general, it is buy the best quality you possibly can afford at the time. So when I bought these seat covers, it was a little bit of a wait to get them shipped out. And one of my mates was like, I'm not waiting that long. I'm going to go buy a budget pair of seat covers. He went out and bought a budget pair of seat covers. His seats have already got these big rips down the seams here. Obviously, he bought a cheaper, shitter pair of seat covers. I waited. I got a really good set of seat covers. And look, the proof is in the pudding. These things get a flogging. There is absolutely nothing wrong with these and that goes with everything on this car. Everything that I've put on this car, everything that I own in general is the best quality. You buy it once, you buy it right. Now on the passenger side of the car, we've got a little bit of a, a, little bit of a device under this seat. So what we've got here, it's called a Cell Fi Go unit. This is a cell booster. So what happens is that second aerial that you guys saw at the front of the car there, what this is connected to that. So if we've got one bar of 3G, this will pump our phone reception up. And that's where that screen comes in handy. We've got internet just about anywhere we go in WA. So while I'm just run Google Maps through there, that's how I use the maps and we're off grid in the bush. We are proper off grid, and this thing gets us most of the time um, cell or cell service to our phones. And then that's how we upload videos. I just hotspot off my phone to my laptop in the back of the car, uploading videos in the bush, running this unit. It is a little bit of a, um, don't you dare say that word. It's a little bit of a game changer, but honestly, it is. This thing, without this, we would have no reception in a lot of the places we go. So that, very, very good investment. Hold up, we forgot something behind this chair. While we've got that chair flicked forward, we're no longer looking at that Mac-10. What we're looking at now is this. This is an 80, actually, this is a 60 liter water tank. So while I've got the chair flicked forward, we might as well talk about it. This water tank here, 60 liters. You've got a, your fill cap here, you've got a breather which runs across here, and then it runs all the way up into the roof there. So there's no, no chance of splashing out of the breather. We've got a hose, which we can hang outside here, which is gravity fed, which is, we don't really use that hose too often because we've got the tanks on the back, but what we do use this for, this is connected to a pump, which is in the back, and I'll show you guys, that's how we have showers. So this is our like showering water, and those two on the back of our drinking water. So we've got 40 on the back, 60, 60 litres of water on the inside. 
The one thing I will say about this tank is it doesn't have any baffles in it. So when you're running about half tank or quarter of a tank of water and you're on a bumpy track, you can hear, it doesn't bother me, but it probably would bother some people. You'll always hear that water sloshing. It's like where if you had a couple of baffles inside the tank, it probably wouldn't slosh around as much, but it's only a tiny little negative. This tank's good. It's a poly tank. It's fitted custom to this draw system. We'll get to the draw system in a little while, but there's 60 liters of fresh drinking water, showering water, and that's more than enough for the trips that we do. Right. Another thing that I haven't spoken about are these little door trims. These don't come stock with a Troopy either. So these are from Cruiser Console as well. They've got a little drink holder there. You can put a can of Coke, you can put a beer, you can put a coffee in there. It's just a little door trim that doesn't come stock on a Cruiser, but that is also very, very handy to have. Obviously, that speaker mounts straight to the face of that one. Now it's gonna to start to get exciting. We're gonna start talking about the nitty gritty bits of the car. So the boys over at Pro Camp Solutions custom built the draw system in the back of the Troopy here. And um, again, cannot fail the work they've done. It has just been, it's, it's incredible. What we've got is we've got drawers, two drawers, one drawer here, one drawer here. These drawers slide the whole way out. So this drawer slides back until it hits that 60 litre water container. This top drawer is generally our cooking gear. So we've got knives, salt, pepper, oil, jet boil, camp oven, just your general sort of camping stuff is in this top drawer here. This is obviously looking pretty skimp right now. We've just come back from a trip, but that's the top drawer. It has like a semi lock there. So you can only, you can have it halfway or full way. And in this bottom drawer, this is basically like a toolbox. What the boys did, they make this stainless steel little table. So this thing just slides along and you can actually use that as a table. You can cut food up here. You can do whatever you want. I've actually never used it as a table. We've got a type table behind me. I'll show you that in a sec. But this thing does come in handy. Never come in handy for me, but it would come in handy. So what we've got down here, this is just like a tool kit really. I've just got snatch straps, shovel, knives, bug spray, GME, personal location beacon. Don't leave home without it. First aid kit, tire wire, gas bottles, the good old trusty knife. It's just basically a tool kit, that bottom drawer. This one's 100 mil deep. This one here is 150 mil deep. Here, we have a front runner table. This is where majority of the cooking gets done if we're not using that side table over there. So this is like a nice solid table. You know, this little ply extension. So that ply bit pulls out. Gas cooker here. We're chopping up fruit, vegetable, fish here, cooking it here. We've got a light. This thing is turbo. These lights are incredibly good. I'll show you guys those lights a little bit later on. But this is the good, good table with that slide out section. I can't fault this table, to be honest. There's no negative things to say about that. It gets used just about every single day. This little panel down here, this is where we have our Red Arc Red Vision screen. So this is showing us what's going on with the solar. I'm not too sure if you guys can see that in the sun, but that's showing us all of our solar readings here. Down the bottom, we've got water and we've got an air compressor pump. So this one is the air compressor. You just plug a hose in, you can pump up your tires, footballs, bloody floaties, floaties down the beach. We use that quite often. Something that does get used all the time is this water hose. So what I can do is I plug this little fitting into there, I hit water pump, and then this here is now a shower. So we just shower, we can shower out in the bush. This pump is hooked up to that 60 litre tank behind the passenger's chair. So this is what we do after those mud crabbing missions we do. I just stand here, usually butt naked in the middle of the bush, having a shower in the back of the car. Um, Look, it's not hot water. I would never put a hot water unit in a troopy. I know some people do, but bloody hell, mate, we're camping. So that's what we use for a shower. Look at the pressure, it's, it's pretty good. So when I was working with the boys at Pro Camp Solution to make this custom draw set up, there was a lot of things that we had to think about when we were making the draw system. Now, if you're gonna build a troopy, I would highly recommend you do these couple of things. This floor is actually, it's like obviously a little aisle. You can walk down there. But what we've done is you can pull the floor out flip it upside down, and then you can slide that bit of flooring back in there. And what that does, that makes this section here a big bed. Also at the front there, you can do the same. You can pull a little bit of flooring out, flip it up on top, and this section of the car here becomes a big bed. So if you ever want to be stealth, you don't want to be popping the rooftop tent up, you can just put that there. I've done it quite often. I just roll a swag out in the back and I'll sleep in the middle of the bush. And then in the morning, all you got to do is put that down roll that back in and you've got your little floor again that is something that was very very well thought of when you jump on in the car this is something that we use all the time 
we've cut these little sections out here. So what you do is, when you've got those two back doors closed in the back of the car, you can't access this drawer, obviously, because the doors are closed. So we've cut these little lids in the top here. So when you're in the car, you can get anything out of here. So there's a lid there, and there's also another lid at the back here, so you can access the back of that drawer system. On the side, we've used this little gunnel down the side here for storage. So you've got this big open area down here all the way back to that water tank. And this is where we keep a little bit of bog roll, snake bite kit, obviously that shower. There's just a lot of stuff in here. We've got the air compressor hose, rain coats. We've got the twin ARB air compressor uh, mounted on the side in this little compartment here. And you can also take out the um, little bits of channel there. So this is very, very good storage. It's a good place to uh, use wasted space. And it all shuts up and fits flush like that to make a bed if you want to. One thing that was pretty important when we were doing this build was I wanted to be able to sit here with the roof down and use this here as a bench to edit videos on. Not only edit videos on, if it's blowing a gale outside and I don't want to put the roof up, I still want to sort of comfortably sit here. I can't sit with my back directly straight up because I do hit my head on the roof. But I often sit here with the roof shut, windows open, I just edit videos in the middle of the bush. So what we did was, I'll just show you guys what it is if you ever want to build a troopy. This draw system here, I can't even see that, what's that? It's 370 high from the bottom of the floor. And this draw system here from bottom of floor is 660 high. So those two measurements worked out perfect for me to sit here, edit videos, and use this here as a little bench. What we've got in the front here, we've got two drawers. One drawer, this thing's put on by magnets. So it's a magnet at the back, it holds it shut, slides out. That thing's about 80 mil deep. And then we've got a big drawer here. So this is where we keep all of our camera gear. We've got drones, we've got cameras, we've got fishing reels, we've got surf fins, coffee. So these drawers are big drawers. These are actually very, very deep drawers. And these are matching, so there's two drawers here, two drawers there, they are identical. So there is no wasted space when we were doing this build. Down here, we've got a little gas cooker, but what this is, this is an empty panel here. So this is originally built for shoes. So you step in here, you kick your shoes off and you put your shoes under there, out of the way, you've got a nice easy walkway. But what I found was that my little gas cooker slides perfectly in there. So that's where I keep my gas cooker. At the back, there's a lot of storage there. Look, it's starting to get a little bit congested in here. So what we'll do is we'll pop this roof up and we'll come back in and go through the rest of the drawer system. So what we did on this troopy was we did the rooftop conversion. We've got an LU cab rooftop conversion. So they cut the roof off, they stick this roof on. Again, I'm gonna say the word game changer. This is, this is if you're gonna get a trooper, you need to do this. But there are a couple of negatives when you do this to your car. One of the biggest negatives are these clips here. So these clips are forever breaking. You can see that's just done up with a little bit of tire wire. Like I said, we've just come from out bush and um, the clip that they provide you snapped off. They've sent me out two clips now and it just forever snaps. So I'm definitely gonna upgrade these clips when we get back into civilization. But that's one of the negatives of this rooftop conversion. These things snap all the time. But with that said about the clips being negative, a massive positive about this thing is when you're out bush, You've, you've had a big day fishing, mud crabbing, sand flies are rampant on the ground, mosquitoes are hectic. It's this simple to go to bed. You flick your latches, this thing pops up on, gra on gas struts, just like this, and just like that, my bed's made. I've already got blankets, pillows, I've got everything already stored in here. That's it, it's simple, easy. You're out of the bugs, you're out of the mud, you're away from the snakes, spiders, safe in a car. It is a very, very, very good system. We'll get up here and we'll go inside the bedroom now. So this is what the bedroom looks like from up here. You get these big windows, very, very tight mesh, so you don't get any bugs or anything coming up in here. Like I said, the bed's already made. We've got a mattress, I mean, we've got a blanket, we've got another little sheet up here. Once you jump up, you can turn around, then you can close this lid. Bang, and this is what your bed looks like. You've got another window with a little awning here, so you can see outside. That never, ever, ever gets opened. I don't ever open that up. But this is what the bedroom looks like, and um, dude, there is that much room in here. Look at this. Sitting here pretty, head doesn't even touch there. 
Your little feet have still got a heap of room down there. This is one of the best things we ever did to the car, was put this bed up here. Then, you just open that up, you can get out, jump down, boom. This, you just push this up. And then you've got so much, so much room for activities. Look at that. The one thing that I will say, if you're gonna consider putting a rooftop conversion on your car, you gotta be prepared for like the creaking sound. So when you're going over, like when you're fully flexing this trooper, you're going down big tracks, the roof does flex a lot. And I suppose that's what makes these two clips snap. So you do get a little bit of creaking when you're going down, when you're proper like articulating down tracks, the roof does twist on the, on the body of the car and it does make creaking sounds. But look, again, it's nothing that we really worry about. Expect creaking sounds, expect your things to snap. But apart from that, it is a solid, it's a solid, solid built bit of kit and um, it's absolutely changed the way we camp. Now that we've got enough room to have a party inside, let's jump back up inside and finish off. I'll show you guys the rest of what's going on in there. But before we go in there, we've got new hats on the online shop, this rubber patch FDYS design, and of course, the slob design. It is all on fieldateshop.com. Jump over there, check it out, support your boy. But we're gonna jump up in here and show you guys what else is going on? So we used every little bit of space possible to our advantage. So here, above the water tank, that water tank left us with about a hundred mil gap here. So what we did was, or well the boys at Pro Camp Solutions did, was made another little lift, lift out section. So you can take that lid off there. We've got about a hundred mil void here. So inside here, we've got the blow up mattress, blow up pillow, spare gas bottles, just camping goods ratchet straps, just other stuff that you always need when you're out bush. This doesn't get used too much. This is like a little bit of a backup section here, but it's always nice to have. There was no wasted space on this um, build. Coming back over to this side, we've got a fridge. Now, I've had Ingalls my entire life, and I was a little bit skeptical because I went with the Dometic CFX fridge. So we've got one side's a fridge, one side's a freezer, and I tell you what, since this has been put in the car, it has never been turned off. Like I'm talking, this thing's never been turned off. The solar batteries that are charging this fridge just let this thing run 24 seven. So one side's a fridge. Obviously there ain't much going in there except for an empty Corona box, but that's the fridge there. And then freezer here, which has just got a little bit of cray bait in there. But like I said, this never gets turned off. It's strapped down with these two heavy duty straps. So when you're going over these corrugated roads and these bumpy tracks, this thing goes nowhere. So far, so good. I've had no issues with the fridge. Definitely can't complain. One thing that I do like about it, it has an app that links to your phone. So when you're driving, you can actually see what temperature your fridge is on, your freezer's on. Like just the other day, Max, Mac 10 was getting drinks out of the fridge and she said it wasn't cold enough. So I just went onto the app and you can just go bump, 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 bump and just turn the fridge down or up or you can see what sort of levels your fridges are running at. So it's pretty sick how that can link to your phone. Can't complain about the fridge, it's just, it's never stopped. It's been running for like over, over a year in the car, no issues with it. So up on the roof, we've got two 120 watt solar panels, which are running down to the Manager 30 system, which is bolted on the side of the, side of the walkway here. This is another, this is a 2000 watt inverter, also from Red Arc. So what we've done is we've completely gone with the whole entire Red Arc system. The reason we went with Red Arc, they are the best in the game, you can't fault them. So this system here runs to that screen you would have seen before on the back of the back of the um, display on the back of the cupboard there. That just shows us absolutely everything that's going on. We can turn lights on, we can turn lights off, we can do everything from that little system down there. We've got the inverter running a little cord up to a box. And this box is where we charge all of our batteries. So you can just have household appliances running in this car. We plug air fryer, rice cooker, laptop chargers, camera chargers, everything charges here. The other day I was building a chicken coop at home. I had an extension lead plugged into this inverter running out to a saw and I was cutting bits of wood with a saw from that. So it's honestly, we could live completely off grid forever with the solar system that's in this car. It's off its head. If we had enough water, you'd never have to go into civilization. But this system that we've got, it's just no complaints. It's bloody beautiful. Another minor negative thing with this rooftop conversion is these little seals that they give you, they're forever falling off. That's not it, you just glue that thing back on. But what you can actually see is when this roof falls down, it rubs on this little bit of plate here and you can actually see 
Like, look at my fingers. You've got all this black stuff on your fingers. That metal is slowly getting chewed away from the vibrations on each side here. That's just an another little negative, but while we're still inside the car, I'll show you guys that this rooftop conversion actually comes with these little reading lights. So you've got these little lights, they pivot around, you can lay in bed, you can read a book or whatever, they come in handy. It also comes with lights built in on the roof. So you've got a light there, and then you've also got a little light here, which at night time, they are crazy, crazy bright. All right, now that we're on the fact, now that we're talking about lights, let's jump out of the car and we're gonna, um, we're gonna go and see some electri electrical work. Now we're talking the brains of the power system. So the boys over at Klarman Automotive have done all of the wiring in the car. And this here is called an Egon system. This thing, this is the brains of the whole entire system that we're running in this car. This Egon system is basically the brains of the power unit. All of the fuses are in here. Every single fuse I need is inside this little system. And the thing that I love about this is every fuse has its own own little separate light. So if a fuse blows, the little light comes on. All I gotta do is take off this clear face, change the fuse and the light will turn off. Have never had to change anything on this car. We have given this car an absolute flog and corrugations, water crossings, everything, and I have not had to touch anything on this electrical system. The boys over at Klarman have done an incredible job. Here's those big heavy duty straps that are holding that fridge down. Everything's just done properly on this car and that's what I like about it. But there's the Egon system, that's the brains of our um, electrical system. So coming off that Egon power unit there, we've got these lights. This one's actually hard mounted on the top here for when we're cooking, but it's a three stage light. At night time, it's incredibly bright. You can hold the button down and it turns orange. So you keep all those little bugs and mosquitoes away at night. We've got one light there. We've got two on the inside, including the lights that come with the um, rooftop tent. So there's so many lights inside this car. One thing that I do do when I go camping is I just pop that side window open. I've got another light here. So I just hang that one out on the side there. We rip him out here. I've got a little bit of Velcro out there. That Velcro has been there for one year and it's still going strong. Look at this, I just Velcro the light up there at nighttime when we're fishing. Put that thing full ball. That does like a 15 meter spread. So that would light up this whole entire area at night. And then when I'm done, I just turn him off, chuck him back on the Velcro on the roof, and there's no lights, there's nothing on the outside of the car that can rip, get ripped off on shrubs and bushes and stuff. So that's a little bit of the power system we've got going on in the car. Again, Red Ark, he did some of the best equipment ever. We have never had an issue in the year and a half of having the car. No issues whatsoever with the wiring. We haven't really had any issues any, anywhere. Mechanically, nothing. We've been very, very lucky. But like I said, we've used, the be we've used the best people to build this car. And um, you do it once, you do it right. Another thing that I would highly recommend if you're going to do a troopy is sound deaden the inside of the internal walls of the car. This, usually when you bang on this, it's just like a tin can. It's honestly, it's like ting ting. I sound deaden the entire car, like the floor, the walls, absolutely everything. So you, now, when you bang on the side of that car, it is so solid. I went completely overboard with the sound deadening, but look, it's worth it. It's super solid now. Usually it sounds like a tin can. Under the engine or under the bonnet here, this is where the party, this is where the party happens. V8 turbo diesel. We haven't done, well, we, we've done a fair bit under here. We've got um, PDF or Perf diesel performance diff breathers here. It's been, we've done a full Safari Armax, Armax system in the engine. This thing goes like a shower of shit. Honestly, for a big heavy car, when it's loaded up, it just goes, mate. One thing that I will say about a Troopy, it is a pig to drive off road. When, I mean, drive on road. When we're on road and we're doing like 12 hour drives, it's not a comfortable car. I've got mates with 200 series. I've got a mate with a 300 series. You jump in their cars, it's like, it's just luxury. But as soon as this thing goes off-road and goes where it's meant to be driven, my God, it just turns on. It's a GXL, it's got front and back diff lock. It's just, we've never been stuck. Like, I've never really, really been stuck. I never had to use the winch. But yeah, she goes like a shower of shit. Very, very strong. One thing that we, I would say is we've got one battery. We've got one cranking battery. It's not a dual battery in here. Because we've got the Red Arc system, we don't need a secondary battery in here. We were down in Esperance probably half a year ago, had the tunes on the entire day. Obviously the radio runs off of this battery and we had a flat battery and we were in the middle of nowhere. Luckily we had the tinny on the back of the car so I could take the tinny battery, chuck it in here, crank the car over and then swap batteries again. 
It happened again about a month ago. We were out bush playing tunes. Luckily, we were parked up on a hill and this battery went flat. So I've just got to keep that in the back of my head. I don't have dual batteries in the, in the um, engine bay, but you just got to keep in the back of my head tunes. Use the little um, dock that we've got in the back for music instead of the um, radio itself. But that is about the car. I don't know. Have we missed anything, Mac 10? We would have missed something for sure. But I think that's it, eh? I think so. Well, there's definitely going to be something that we've forgotten on the build of the car, but we've had it for over a year now. And um, like I said, we haven't had any issues with anything. One thing that we have had an issue with is death wobbles on the front of the car. I don't know if you guys know what death wobble is, but you're doing like 60, between 60 to 100 Ks in that range. The front wheel just starts going and it just starts wobbling. We can't really find what the source is. We've swapped our wheels around. We've done, we've taken it to different tire places and different areas and um, no one can really put their thumb on the problem. It's fixed for now. It's been, it's been a good girl, but we don't really know what the death wobble is. One other thing we did do is get the underneath the chassis sprayed with like a rust protection because we're always down the beach around salt water. I always wash the car as soon as I'm doing, like as soon as I can, I wash the salt off it. So we've had an under, underneath spray of like this rust protection done. But apart from that, She's been an absolutely beautiful rig. Everybody who worked on the car did, an, did a phenomenal job. We haven't had any issues, like I said. Links are in the description if you guys want to see anything. And um, I reckon that's it. Thank you so much for watching. Happy four-wheel driving. Happy fishing. Much love, doggies. I'll see you in the next video. Yeah.